and my grandmother, who's Vietnamese, obviously left during the war. I was mainly shocked about what Da Nang was. I was I... 19 years old at the oh, time. That's very that young. I basically lost that job. I I just hired a lawyer. Basically, you're gonna make friends within the first week for sure. Like I really can't get that thing done. Yeah, that's the difference in mentality. I mean. Definitely, yeah. and I don't see myself going back to the UK anytime soon. Hello, my name is Olga. I'm staying in Vietnam for a year now, and today we are talking to a young business owner from UK who went from working in local hotels since 2015 to starting her own business in Vietnam. Why she doesn't see herself going back to UK anytime soon? And what are the costs and challenges of living in Danai? Let's find out. Hello, my name is Isis. I'm from England, uh, and this is my art space. I'm 28 years old. I've been living in Da Nang since 2015. My family is a mix from Hong Kong, Vietnam and England. One of my grandmothers English, my other grandmothers Vietnamese and both my grandfathers are from Hong Kong. So yeah, I, I've heard of Vietnam obviously, I, we've never visited before and my grandmother who's Vietnamese obviously left during the war. So she now lives in America and I don't think she's ever going to come back and visit unfortunately. <laughs> But I think for me to come and live and work in Vietnam was definitely to see more of my roots in Vietnam. Uh, my grandmother definitely was um, upset when she found out I was moving here. Obviously, her memories from Vietnam are very different to what I've experienced. Yeah, so a lot has changed since then. A lot has changed, yeah. And I, when I saw her last, I did show her loads of photos and videos of me living in Da Nang and... Yeah, she didn't really want to discuss about it. <laughs> I originally came here to work in a hotel and basically never left. <laughs> and now uh, my career has uh, ended at the hotel and now I've opened my own business after COVID. It was definitely challenging leaving home on my own. And I came to Vietnam, I didn't know anyone here. So originally I was in England and I got a job in Da Nang. Um, I'd never even heard of Da Nang prior to that and I was at university studying hospitality management and in our third year we have to do like a placement. Most of my friends decided to stay in London and do their uh, placement year there and yeah I just got this opportunity to come to Da Nang in Vietnam and yeah I just came basically and it was very scary coming on my own so far away from home. Um, I was 19 years old at the oh, time. that's very young. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. quite young. So I guess um, I stayed in Vietnam during COVID. My job prior to COVID was working for an events company. I like absolutely loved this job. And unfortunately, because of COVID, our clients that we used to run the events for couldn't come into the country. So um, yeah, I basically lost that job and didn't do too much for two years. And I just decided that it was time for me to open my own business. I've never run a business on my own before, but I think because I had a, a long time to figure things out during COVID, I made a business plan and decided that Da Nang didn't really have anything like this coffee art space. So, and it's something that I'm really passionate about, arts and crafts, yeah. Coming to Da Nang on a holiday or planning to stay here for a while? Join our community and your trip will be so much better. Get my guide where I share great beach hotels and apartments, local restaurants, coffee shops and co-working spaces, places to shop, and of course, all the must-see attractions. You're also getting access to my personal Google Maps list where I already pinned almost 700 locations all over Vietnam and in the name. As a bonus, you're also getting access to a private chat group where I am answering all the follow-up questions myself. It's a perfect chance for us to connect and find travel buddies, so I hope you will join our community and you can find the link in the description. So I guess because of my background and my, my ethnicity, uh, we used to travel to Hong Kong quite often as a child. I wasn't too shocked when I came to Vietnam. Uh, it's a beautiful place though. I think I was mainly shocked about what Da Nang was. I didn't mm. know about it. It's a beautiful beach. The well is lovely. And everything is so cheap in Vietnam compared back to England. So yeah, I think for all the like Asian countries I've traveled to, uh, Vietnam is definitely my favorite. I would choose to live here over 
most places in Asia. Sometimes I find the Vietnamese people will just say like yes to everything, even though they like didn't understand you, or maybe they don't really have the solution, but they'll still say yes, like mm-hmm. they can get it solved. I yeah, think that's a culture thing for sure. Yeah, I think they are trying to help as much as they can. For sure, Even yeah. if they cannot help, they still try. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, sometimes it's just easier to say like, I really can't, get that thing done or I can like maybe try and find yeah. someone else to help you but they'll just say yes basically yeah, yeah. that's the difference in mentality I definitely mean, yeah I'm, definitely I, I think here in Vietnam it's just not polite to say no something like that for sure yeah. definitely like very affordable to live here yeah the local food's delicious as well I would say like a lot of people living here uh being like the foreigner expats um a lot of them have like very different things they enjoy so It's very easy to create like a hub for different groups. There's a lot of creative people here. There's a lot of musicians. There's a lot of digital nomads, people in like crypto and everything. It is very easy to make friends. There's just a lot of like activities and meetups going on. So mm. if you've moved here and you don't know anyone, like you're gonna make friends within the first week for sure. Yeah, yeah. I think that's one of, one of the major things that people like so much. I mean, back home, in a big city, we don't know our neighbors right. that often. Yeah, and definitely. here you step outside your room and you're already talking to someone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm personally like quite organized and on time and maybe it's like my hospitality background or events background. But I do find in Vietnam, it's definitely like Vietnamese time, we call it. I think maybe because like the culture here is really like chill and laid back and it's really lovely. Like that's why I think a lot of people move here as well. But for me to be like quite an organized person, if I've told my friend I'm gonna meet them at like 11 Mm o'clock and they don't come for like 15, 20 minutes, it like stresses me out. (laughs) So sometimes that happens. And it's not just Vietnamese people, it's a lot of like my friends that are foreigners living here too. I think we just adapt to it. I myself adapted for sure. Also more on time person, but yeah. (laughs) Here in in Turkey I had it and here too, I was like, yeah, just just chill, Yeah, (laughs) chill. It is very different to what I experienced back living Mm -hmm. in England. Get a chance to travel back in time and meet your younger self before she comes here. Like Mm -hmm. what uh, one advice you would give her, something like that, you know? I would say I would like to advise my younger self to be more like adventurous and more like confident, I guess. I think when I first moved here, I was quite homesick and scared and because I was, yeah, quite young, I guess. So if I could like redo it all, I think I would like to come to Vietnam on my own and just be more like willing to try new things, meet more people. Yeah, just be more confident and uh, not as scared as I was, I guess. What's your future plan? Do you plan to stay here and just uh, grow your business or? I definitely would want to stay in Vietnam longer. I don't know how long that will be, but I guess I've already almost been here like eight years and I definitely didn't think I'd be here this long but I guess I really love Da Nang and Vietnam and I don't see myself going back to the UK anytime soon. My boyfriend and I live in Da Nang. I would say you could definitely live quite cheaply here. I like to eat like really local food which is very cheap. I would say one bowl of fur might cost you like one pound in England which is very very cheap to get a meal. But I also like to go out and have a nice dinner with my friends and go for a cocktail. So in comparison to the UK, living very comfortably here is still very cheap, I would say, Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe on average within a month, you could spend like comfortably between like $800 to a thousand, including your rent or your food or your bills. That's literally like eating takeaway every day. I don't normally cook so much at home, but I would say when we do cook at home, it's uh, normally like more Western food and it is quite expensive to buy groceries, to cook Western food here, like cheese is expensive, cream, yeah, I do like my pastas. If you were like making more Asian types of dishes, it is very cheap to buy groceries, but if you are buying all the Western products, it's quite expensive actually, yeah. yeah. It might be even cheaper to eat out. I would say like, On average, most of my 
meals as like eating Western food、uh, would probably be like between 100k and 150k, which yeah, still is very cheap for like a really nice meal. And then there are really lovely restaurants here where you could spend like up to a million a meal, which is close to 30 pounds. Which yeah, compared yeah. to England, that's still really cheap for like a really nice meal. Yeah, depending on like your budget, you could live like very cheaply, or you could splash out and still probably not spend that much money. What, what would you say、uh, like expectation for like a couple? Maybe like up to one thousand five hundred as a couple, covering all your food, your rent, and traveling like around Da Nang here. You can rent a motorbike. It's about like one mil a month to get like a basic motorbike. If you do have experience driving motorbikes, you could get like a bigger bike, which could、mm-hmm. probably cost a bit more, maybe one point five or two mil for like the big manual bikes. But yeah, I would definitely warn you about the roads here. It's、uh, they don't. I mean, there are laws on the roads, but they don't really follow them. Yeah. It's a bit crazy to drive here, and a little bit scary at the beginning for sure, until you learn how to. Navigate your way on the roads in Vietnam. Oh,、well, if、uh, <laughs> if a person has experience in Southeast Asia in general, they they will be fine. But if、Definitely. they don't, <laughs> yeah, it will be an experience. I drive every day now, so and it's been about eight years. <laughs> What would you say is your like favorite season in Vietnam? Oh, which months? I really like the heat, which is kind of weird. I think for most people, <laughs> it is. <laughs>、um, So I would say my favorite months are like kind of from like March, April, probably to like August.、Mm. It, it it does get really hot in the summer,、mm. sometimes up to forty degrees. But yeah, that's my favorite. I like sitting on the beach and like being all warm.、So、you then, sit on the beach during the daytime. Yep. <laughs> Normally, I'll probably go in the morning. <laughs> At lunchtime, I'd probably go inside to the aircon. Okay. And then like in the afternoons, quite nice. Okay. But.、Uh, I, I guess Vietnam,、uh, Da Nang, personally has two seasons, so it'll be like hot or be raining,、mm-hmm. and that's the two seasons of Vietnam. There's not really like an autumn and spring time.、Mm-hmm. It kind of just switches like from forty degrees, and then it'll like drop to twenty、mm-hmm. between twenty and thirty during the winter. So it's still quite warm <laughs> compared to back home, but、uh, when it does get cold, I really feel it. Like I'll be wearing like a jumper、mm-hmm. and a jacket and a scarf. So yeah, but this winter has been quite warm still. Yeah, right now it's like middle of December. Yeah, it's December and, and wearing, it's, yeah, we're wearing little, dresses, flip flops.、Uh, still in my flip flops. <laughs> but my family like to visit during like March because it's like switching from winter to、mm-hmm. summer. So when my family visit, they can't really stand the heat as much as I can. So yeah, they don't ever visit in summer. It's way too hot for them.、Mm-hmm. So we opened Create Art Space in March. So yeah, not a year yet, but we're getting close to that year mark. Yeah, I think you're doing pretty good.、Uh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. So Create Art Space to me is a place where you can come and either learn different skills through art or other things. It's also like a community hub. So. People come and have meetings here. There's like an English club, yeah. And at the end of the day, it's also just a coffee shop. So a lot of our regular customers come in the morning and they work on their laptop and then go for lunch. It is quite difficult to open your own business in Vietnam, and I I just hired a lawyer basically to help me with everything. There's also other companies or agents in Da Nang that can also help you open a company. But Vietnam do require like some kind of proof of investment and things like that, and then also to get like your visa afterwards, a little bit tricky. Yeah, I think like since I've opened, I finally now got my like temporary residency card from it. So yeah, that's the benefit of opening a business. Actually, you, yeah, you get to stay for a year and then. So my TRC from opening the company is two years now. So in two years, I can renew it. So you do have a longer term visa compared to some other people, yeah.、Mm-hmm. Or if you come to Vietnam to work, you can also get like a working visa, which normally is about one or two years for your temporary residency card.、Mm. So when I was beginning to open Create, we did a lot of construction, and then I decided that I needed to hire a Vietnamese personal assistant because I don't speak Vietnamese. It's quite Challenging to communicate with suppliers and find staff. 
was difficult at the beginning, but once the team was formed, it was a lot easier to get things up and running. Being brought up in England and my training for hospitality was in England. I did some work experience in hotels in London. So when I first moved to Vietnam, it was very different, my experience <laughs> here. And how would I, you say it's different? I think like in England, we are like trained to be more like proactive. And, you know, if our boss has to tell us to do something like would probably be in trouble. Whereas here I found like a lot of the staff, not all of them, but most of them are waiting for to be told to like instructions, clean, instructions basically. Yeah. So I think that's the main difference of the culture and the way they are trained. So when I opened Create, I tried to like implement the training I have had to my staff just because like the area where Create is, it's like in the expat area. So instead of like them doing customer service to their Vietnamese customers, it will be mainly mm -hmm. expats and foreigners and tourists. So training them in a different way. Yeah. But uh, I would say when I first compiled my team for the coffee shop here, one of my staff really stood out to me. And yeah, by the next month, I just asked him if he wanted to be manager of the cafe. And that really, really helped me a lot personally. Mm -hmm. And also to like move the coffee shop forward. Yeah, he implemented a lot of things and he's very proactive and yeah, really great staff member. I feel like the most difficult challenges we've had is dealing with the rain and leaking and things like that. Yeah, within during the, the rain season? Yeah, so in Da Nang we have rainy season like normally from October to January, February. Some years it's totally fine, not that rainy. And some years there's like big storms and mm. yeah, it's quite a lot of rain. My designer that I did the construction with uh, at Create was really great and just came and fixed everything and it's just one of those things you're not going to know about until mm -hmm. it happens yeah. <laughs> until there's leaking within the building yeah. yeah so that was all fixed and then the next time it rained heavily it we basically had no leaking which is great yeah